Welcome to The Archery Show. In this month's episode, we'll be learning how to train a proper recurve release with Juan Carlos Holgado, and hear from the 2011 World Archery Champion, Denise Van Lamoen. But before that, we've been testing cost-effective ways to get more archery broadcast on TV. Archery has been filmed for decades, but the broadcast of international tournaments took a significant step forward when the Archery World Cup was first launched in 2006. Technology has evolved over the years and production of the sport has benefited, but live coverage of archery stopped in 2020 when events were cancelled due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The health crisis inadvertently brought about new innovation when World Archery ran the lockdown knockout using athletes' mobile phones to create a remote competition. And now some of the new techniques learned then are being applied to real life events as competitions restart and we get back to archery. Okay, as soon as you put TV on an event, of course, get more challenge, get more stress, but it's challenging, but it's easy. We, we can do it and it's uh, affordable. So anyone who got it uh, a live event, bring new opportunity, new challenge, but it's worth it to do it. Until now, high-level broadcast of archery was prohibitively expensive for all but the biggest international competitions. But using small broadcast trucks with small local production teams, we're now taking low-cost live footage and remotely adding commentary and graphics, allowing World Archery to broadcast more competitions live. Not only will it increase exposure for the sport, but mean more television professionals gain experience broadcasting archery. Alors, uh, uh, mon impression sur le tir à l'arc est plutôt très positif. C'est la première fois qu'on qu produit du tir à l'arc. C'est la première fois qu'on vient sur un événement comme ça. Et c'est euh, vraiment super intéressant. On a, toute l'équipe a été assez euh, motivée de, de voir comment ça se passe et, et assez, assez convaincue que, que c'est un sport exceptionnel. Réaliser un, un, un live de tir à l'arc, c'est pas compliqué, trop compliqué par rapport à d'autres sports. Ce qui, ce qui est compliqué, c'est de c'est de comprendre la routine, la routine qui est imposée par la discipline, à prendre la cible au bon moment, avoir la réaction des archers. Et il, y a, il y a une sorte de routine qu'il faut un peu intégrer dans la réalisation. Mais une fois que ça c'est intégré, ça va, ça, ça se passe super bien. Making an archery competition ready for broadcast does require a little bit of effort, but it's not as complicated as you might think. You don't need an expert. You just need a good communication and deliver in the way that they can do it in the best way. What we do as organizer is we set up the field, we provide the volunteers, all the equipment, we make the setup of the field of finals, and then we put them in the situation they would like to go to be or what they want to have better images. So we provide all the facilities and they just film what we are doing. So while 2020 might have been a pretty terrible year overall, it might have resulted in another big step forward for archery on TV. The point of execution is critical in achieving accuracy when shooting a recurve bow, and releasing the string cleanly is a large part of that. So here's how you can practice a crisper shot. The two parts we contact directly to the bow is the bow hands when we feel the grip and the finger or the string hands when we have the direct contact to a string. And this is a two point that really give us a feeling of the shot. When, when the grip is not consistent, we have different reaction of the bow, we have different way or pathway of the string, so it's difficult to group. We also have little reaction that grab the bow or we can have push in the bow, which is not ideal. It's difficult to make it consistent. And the string hands we use to make too much tension when it's not in a good grip or when we are sliding and then trying to bring back, we make it inconsistent, so the release is difficult to make it in a proper way. So it's add inconsistency to the shot, which we don't want. The critical part when we release the string is to make sure that the string is always coming from the same position, that is not a starting and weak and shorter or longer position, which will add more or less effort, which at the beginning you have more speed or less speed, more parabola, and this increases the inconsistency a lot. So it's very important that we have the right grip and we don't put too much pressure to avoid to need to open the finger to release which gets shorter distance or to make not enough pressure that is sliding that is sliding the string so both part is not good so it's important to keep the same pressure the same position until moment of release Regularly, when I observe archers that come here to the center to, to improve, is there's a tendency to have the string too much on the tip of the fingers. 
The theory is as more in the tip, less friction is when the string is released, which is true. But also it's true that because in the tip, we have the feeling that it slides and we put pressure on the finger and we add too much pressure. I used to say that if the bow has 15 kilos, we need 15 and a half kilos to hold it. Normally, most of the action make 20 kilos, too much strength. This doesn't allow to relax the finger properly. What we do is we open it with the extension, the, the muscle, extension muscle. So it's important to keep the same pressure consistent, just enough pressure that is not sliding and we don't increase it, that we feel safe. When we have it closed, the string is very close to the force of line, which is easy to hold. So the goal to have the stringer in a hook position very deep and in is to allow that with less pressure, we hold the string. That's the key part for, for having a good release. I used to have three exercises to train a proper release. The first one is about keeping the shape, the second is about keeping the tension, and the third one is about keeping it in the follow through. For the first exercise, we want to keep the same shape. And to do it easy, we start with a lighter bow, with a beginner bow, something that is easy for us to manage. We get the deep grip, we draw in the stomach, having a very low little extension with a target at two or three meters. We don't need to care too much where it's hitting. And what we do is we observe the hand that keep as less tension as possible. And in this position, when we are ready, we just relax the hand. We don't need to open, we don't need to release, we just relax the hand. It's the string which win our fingers tension. And that's the best way to do a proper release by relaxing the hand and not by opening the finger. The next progression is to do the same thing a bit higher. With the beginner bow, we go on higher, we keep the hand a bit bent to avoid to have a full draw. And with the same exercise, now, no, now by watching, but by feeling. And we just relax the finger. No need to make follow through, just keep relaxing. We feel the stringer win our fingers. The third one is a proper shot. We extend the arm, we come a proper shot, and we are ready with the same position, we relax the finger. Again, it's not important to make a follow through, it's just to feel how the, thing, the hands relax. That's the key part to make a good release. The second exercise is to keep the same tension. And with this, I will, I will advise to get your own bow, which has enough tension. We got the proper position, deep hook. We get the position and when we draw, we try to move the thumb and the little finger. It's an exercise done by the Russian team for many, many years ago when I was junior. So we were moving the finger, the thumb and the finger, which avoid us to make a grip, to, to bend it. When we are moving the thumb and the little finger, there's no way we grip. In the moment we grip and we bend the finger, these two fingers cannot be moved. So it's a checking point that we keep the same tension from the beginning to the end of the draw. We find the draw, we stop, and we let it go. We release, let the string go. The third exercise is to make sure that we keep the same tension after the shot. Many archers feel or believe that when they release, they need to open the finger and the hand need to be relaxed. In fact, that brings us new inconsistency. This exercise is just to focus that when you finish the shot, you keep in the same shape. In the moment of release, we relax a little bit the finger and we keep the finger in the same shape. You can do it with a mirror, you can do it with a tablet, with a delay video, but it's important you feel the fingers are in the same shape and the position you can see and feel that you have not opened the finger and finished with the finger tense. No matter how good you are, no matter the level you are, a beginner, intermediate or high level, improving the release, improving the grip and making it consistent, make you a better archer and better grouping. The 2011 World Archery Championships were held in Turin, Italy, and it was there that Denise Van Lamone made history, becoming the first archer from South America to win an individual world title. Representing Chile, it's Denise Van Lamone. So it's 4 to 2 for Miss Lamone. That's a 10. Wow. She is not letting this gold medal out of her sight. Anything in the gold. That's a 10. Denise Van Lemoen of Chile, the 2011 world champion. Yo a los 16 años recuerdo haberme dicho a mí misma yo quiero ser campeona mundial y quiero ser a bandera chilena en los Juegos Olímpicos. 
Entonces, para mí fue eso, el cumplir un sueño y por lo tanto la demostración de que nada es imposible. Nuestro objetivo era clasificar a los Juegos Olímpicos y eso implicaba que yo tenía que quedar dentro de las ocho primeras. Sabíamos que, teníamos, que yo tenía la, las capacidades técnicas y psicológicas para poder lograrlo, por lo que había ven, venido haciendo de un tiempo antes. Eh, pero por supuesto había que hacerlo en el momento indicado. Llega el minuto en que quedo dentro de las ocho primeras y, y con mi equipo dijimos, bueno, estamos en los Juegos Olímpicos. Pero ahí sucede algo, yo tomo una, una decisión, porque en ese minuto tú logras tu objetivo, lo que ocurre normalmente es que uno se relaje y diga, bueno, ya estamos. ¿ah? Y ahora celebrar, no me relajé, no celebré, y eh, seguí muy enfocada porque yo tenía súper claro que si había sido capaz de llegar hasta ahí, podía, podía también dar una pelea y, ser, eh, y ganar un mundial. no tengo recuerdo de alguna situación especial hasta que me toca con Dragon Jeshu en, en la semifinal donde se da una situación bien particular me dan por ganadora a mí y resulta que yo todavía no había ganado cuando de pronto nos dicen no, tienen que volver a disparar entonces ese momento, cómo te sobrepones a eso, yo es, es algo que no se me ha olvidado, no olvidado nunca. Yo pude manejar bien la situación, de no llenó y no pudo sobreponerse y bueno, yo pasé finalmente a la, a la final. Para mí es importante no solamente por el hecho de ser campeona mundial, sino por todo lo que implica llegar a lograrlo. O sea, son años de trabajo, años de compromiso con con una decisión. Yo tomé la decisión de ser deportista de alto rendimiento, deportista profesional, y, y eso es un compromiso. Yo siento que fue una tremenda, tremenda recompensa un, a, todo, a todo el esfuerzo, a toda esa trayectoria de 20 años. Yo diría que, que cerré muy bien los últimos años de mi carrera deportiva porque fueron los mejores años de mi vida. Yo así los puedo describir, los mejores años de mi vida. Thanks for watching. We'll be back next month with highlights from the first world ranking event since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic and more fresh new feature content. See you then.